Okay, people, let's talk, okay? So, I can't believe I'm having to do this again. I just realized that my Razer uh, uh, video camera is... Sorry, I had to take a sip. My Razer uh, webcam that I got recently, it actually has a built-in mic. So the past few videos I've tried to make, it's, um, I've had this weird situation of like, uh, dual audio going on and I don't know how to split that dual audio. So yeah, let's just say it's been tough <laughs> and I just made a, like a 30 minute video. Uh, I just recorded a 30 minute video on this very topic that I am trying to do right now. Uh, and, you know, had to go back and re-edit it. So, uh, one thing you should always know, if you're using, like, game, uh, think, uh, broadcasting studios like Streamlabs and all that stuff, make sure that uh, everything's working out exactly how it's supposed to be working out. However, and here's the thing. I don't write scripts, so, <laughs> yeah, I gotta go on that rant again, all over again, so, I'm gonna go to what I was gonna say, uh, I, I think I remember most of it for the most part, so, uh, let's start with this, <laughs> uh, so, I did watch the first episode of Quiet On Set, and, bruh, Dan Schneider is a problematic motherfucker, okay? I get it was the 90s, but good lord, brother. That did not age well. Like, you don't... Just take accountability, take responsibility for it, and admit that you are a shitty-ass motherfucker. That's all I'm gonna say about that bit. Uh, and why would you say... Why would you open up your goddamn mouth to say... So, A, say that Katrina, who, who were the people behind that whole little thing? I'm not talking about Dan Schneider at this point. Who were the people who sat there and had the goddamn nerve to tell a 12 or 13-year-old girl that she's getting too fat? And they already have a fat one, referring to Lori Beth Denberg, who, yes, she's a big girl, but oh my God, I... I, I won't lie. When I was a little kid, I actually had a slight little crush on Gloria Beth Denberg as an older woman, you know, type thing. But why the hell would you say Katrina Johnson looked a little fat? Nah. And she looks amazing today. She still looks amazing. She looked amazing when I was a little kid. I thought she was cute when I was a little kid. You know, I had, that was at my, like, close to my age, I think close enough to my age. Uh, you know, crush, as a slightly older woman, or, well, you know, older girl. Anywho, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, why? Why would you open up your mouth to say that? <sighs> Again, I'm ranting, and it's gone off rant already. <laughs> it's gone off the original, like, rant that I had. In the first place, okay? Goodness gracious, I am so sorry about that. Anywho, but yeah, I was also watching um, uh, The Tragic Dan Downfall of Amanda Bynes by Swoop, and that stuff got me. It was crazy. Now, let me give it to the actual meat and bones of this video, okay? And maybe I can make it a lot shorter than 30, 30 minutes, okay? Ah. <laughs> uh, Okay, so here's the thing. So I was watching, uh, well, I was door dashing earlier this after, this morning, actually. Uh, I came across a, a YouTube video by Thorgy's Arcade. Um, it was titled, Mega Man Fighters Build the Roster. Uh, basically, he was trying to make a, he was thinking, he was coming up with a fan theory of how a Mega Man fighting game would actually go about and it's actually a pretty decent one so definitely check out this video 
I'll leave a po uh, I'll leave a <laughs> a link in the description of this video. Okay. Anywho, but he came. He brought up a good point. Okay, how Capcom has uh after Mega Man Eleven came out, Capcom basically hasn't really gone back on its own IPs and try to bring them back to life. I mean, Mega Man 11 was actually a complete shock considering the fact that we don't, we literally thought that Mega Man 10 was the last thing we, get, we were ever going to get see of the Blue Bomber for a while. I mean, come on, like Xbox 360. I remember around the time that Xbox 360 was out, that's when 9 and 10 came out. So, Oh, we only had a Mega Man 11, and then Capcom decided, for some shits and giggles, I guess, to come out with Ghosts and Goblins again. Yeah, that was the wrong IP, but I, I just, I, I've noticed that Capcom only focuses on the Resident Evil franchise and the Street Fighter franchise. We haven't seen a Marvel vs. Capcom game since Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity, and that was horrible. Like, I can't, I haven't even played the game. I loved Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I mean, come on, 2 was the golden one. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was, you know, good and alright. You know, still, you know, played in fighting game tournaments every once in a while. Uh, but all we see is Street Fighter, Street Fighter and Resident Evil. That's basically all Capcom's, like, uh, bread and butter at this point that's what they're making money off of and i realized that Capcom could really you know do make a lot of money they could really make a lot of money if they were to bring back uh the old some of the older rips like come on bring us mega man x9 okay bring us mega man legends 3 for goodness sake uh, that hurt my that hurt my soul when they canceled that development. Oh God, Lord. Anywho, but or or, or heck, bring back um, games like Dino Crisis. Bring Dino Crisis Four to the forefront, and like have Regina finally back. I mean, we didn't get a really like that Dino Crisis Three was just horrible, and the reason why it was horrible is because all of a sudden you decided to make new main characters off of Dino Crisis, and we figured Dino Crisis was Regina's story. I hope I'm saying her name right. I mean, if I'm not saying the name right, I'll leave, like, a little post on here saying that, uh, changing it. However, uh, or, you know, bring back Breath of Fire. I mean, Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter was the last... You know, entry into the Breath of Fire series because I'm not counting Breath of Fire Six, the mobile game, because uh, it was a mobile game and there was hardly any Ryu in it. You play as Ryu's cousin or other family member or something like that, and it wasn't Dragon Transfer. <sighs> but anyways, like a lot of these different, the main. The thing I'm trying to say is, like, a lot of these developers are so focused on, nowadays, uh, publishers are now so focused on this games as a, as a service mentality. You know, this live game thing. And it's not really working out for them in that discussion, okay? Maybe, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's exceptions to the rules. I mean, Fortnite, anyone? Apex Legends? Helldivers 2? Seems to be a great thing, but like games as a service should not be the main thing that you're trying to go for, like the mobile games and all that stuff. I mean, shoot, I was all excited about Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis before it came out, and I thought it was going to be like this really good mobile game, and it was a free to play game, but it's pay to win, and I don't. Like I'm, I'm a consumer of video games. Okay, I love video games. Shoot, I know I need to finish my my streaming run of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I just happened to hit like a little bit of a of a uh, gaming fatigue, or more specifically, 
gaming uh rpg gaming fatigue because i played through persona 3 reload before uh rebirth came out and now i'm just like i'm tapped out of rpgs i can't finish i haven't finished uh like a dragon infinite wealth and i'm that i'm like a couple of chapters off from finishing it shoot i've gotten to chapter 10 on my normal playthrough my my non-streaming playthrough of final fantasy 7 rebirth and i just don't want to continue just yet you know, I had to take a break, and I'm actually looking into doing some, like, Mega Man X speedruns. However, uh, you know, for the first time, of course, speedrunning for the first time. I just figured out how to get the, the, I, I, I just r realized about the whole, uh, what was it called? I just, I, I don't know, the live split, uh, app, so. There's that. Either way. Um, but, you know, there are games that I still need to finish, complete, and all that stuff. However, um, I just... I, uh, there are games that I also want to replay again. I mean, goodness gracious. There are, there are games that I hope would get new games. I mean, shoot, Mega Man X9. I would love that. Okay, and you know, and you don't have to do something all too fancy. You can make bank. These uh, these gaming uh, publishers and developers and all that stuff, they can make bank off of all these old IPs that they decided to just randomly drop that were actually pretty popular back in the day. You just need to go back to go back to the basics what made these games popular in the first place and just build upon it kind of like what happened with Mega Man 11 I mean shoot the 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 double gear system of Mega Man 11 changed the 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 playing field on uh, the normal Mega Man uh game loop and I thought that was great however instead you're focusing on these games as a live service type model and it's it's dumb it's really dumb i mean look what happened with suicide squad uh killed the justice league it is not it, it failed miserably on on sight um shoot gotham knights would have been a great like i would say you could use gotham knights as a way to like um Continue the story of uh, the Gotham, uh, the Batman Arkham games, but with the other characters. Well, not continue the story, but you know what I mean. Like, it would be like a good, um, a, a good like spinoff of the Arkham games. But instead, they decided to make it into a live service game, and it got so boring <laughs> so quickly. I mean, I was playing as Robin. I, I played through it a little bit as Robin, and I, I, it, I could only get so far before I was just like, "Oh, this is just the same loop over and over again, and it's boring. It's a boring loop." Whereas, you know, games like Mega Man, you you get that same. It, it's a game. It's a, it's a loop. I mean, you're going through different levels. You play through the level, beat the boss. But the levels are different and could be a little bit more difficult and could be like a little easier. And you just deal with the the level layout. But it's still great. It's still good. You can still replay. It has good replayability. You will play through it as many times as possible. It's a platformer. Now, granted, I could look. I could really i would love a Mega Man x9 i just said that i know but still i would love a Mega Man x9 and i, I would love you know Mega Man legends 3 i mean goodness gracious i still need to finish Mega Man legends 2 but i need to find a copy of it in order to do so huh <sighs> however the point of the matter is you got all these other ips you got breath of fire i loved Breath of Fire 1 through 4. I never beat any of those. I beat Dragon Quarters, surprisingly, somehow. I don't know exactly how I did that. But I did get used to the game the game after a while. Okay? And I kind of really want to replay it. I mean, shoot, why? Calcum. Just, just allow, allow PlayStation Network 
to allow us to download those games again. I mean, just just saying, like, you, you really need to let us play those games, and you really need to release those games on, like, Steam or, like, Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Network, the PlayStation Store. I mean, I will play it like... Hmm. Put it under the PlayStation Classics, under the PlayStation Plus thing. I would play it in a heartbeat. A lot of people would. I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. But Dino Crisis, uh, like we could use some new Dino Crisis in our lives. People talk about it constantly. Instead, these gaming developers are just sitting there saying, no, we don't want to do it. And they, th here's the thing. They have the perfect way to like kind of push the the idea of these old ips again and you know how let me show you how uh do what sega did you know with uh ah, i forget his name christian i think it was christian white okay christian white no i could be wrong i i, I could be getting that name completely mixed up but uh quish oh no it's christian Whitehead, if I remember correctly, but yeah, he made a, a, a beautiful like um, kind of remake mod for Sonic the Hedgehog, if I remember correctly, the original Sonic the Hedgehog, and it was so good, it was so well done, and it, this is just a fan made uh, remaster of the game. He did it so well that like Sega actually gave him a job allowed him to create what is known as the resurgence of Sonic the Hedgehog in Sonic Mania. Oh my goodness, that game was great, okay? That game was great. Another game I still got to finish, but it's still great, okay? Um, but he did that. Sega did put, took a chance on him, and it made them bank with their, their main mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog. And game developers should do that. Like, there are so many... Like, there's a project... Um, I'm pretty sure some of you have seen on YouTube... Called Mega Man X Corrupted. And I've been wanting to play... Just a little bit of that game. I've seen the gameplay, and it looks so great. It gives you that feel of, like, the, the Mega Man ZX... And maybe Zero games. Because I haven't really fully played through the Mega Man Zero games. But I, I've heard that they're kinda, they kind of have, like, a castle... Uh, metrovania type feel to them Mega Man X Corrupted has the Mega Man X story and characters and allows it to be in that metrovania esque type gameplay I love that I want that it would be great put him on it put people like him on these old IPs because in all honesty there are a lot of fans out there who have the the creativity the the not the the ability to like make these games from scratch and make these games even better than they were before and you could easily you know and they would easily easily welcome a job from you guys and sit there and let them you know and they'll put their spin that could actually revitalize their fran your franchises easily. But you're not doing it. I don't know why. Uh, it, it's, it's dumb. Instead, you're focusing, like, again, like, I've heard rumors that, like, Calcom and all these other publishers want to do this whole games as a live service model. And it's it's blows my mind, really. I mean, shoot, I would love, like, I would love for Namco and Bandai to, like, somehow get, like, a little bit of the right, like, get the rights from Square Enix to, like, get Xenogears over to their side and then re-release a, a remaster of Xenogears and Xenosaga, oh, you know, if somebody has a source code or something like that, and bring that out to fruition and guess what there will be a there's plenty of people who would eat that shit up oh my goodness there's there's money that is being left in the gutter by these produce by these publishers and all that stuff 
that they could easily rake in if they were to just go back to these old IPs. Don't get me wrong, Resident Evil and, and Street Fighter, since we're talking about Capcom, they they are doing gangbusters. I mean, look what happened when yeah, uh, when Capcom decided to remake Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 3, well, not so much Resident Evil 3. I've heard people are that much of a fan of it. I loved it, by the way. I loved the Rad Brad's uh, uh, playthrough of it. Okay, I love his playthroughs. I need to start watching some more of his videos again, but <sighs> there was a few that I couldn't watch anymore because it, it, I just want to play the game. Anywho, but <laughs> um, uh, 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 at the end of the day, like you could actually make bank off of these, but you know, Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Three, Resident Evil Four remakes, they have been doing gangbusters. Street Fighter Six was actually all right, but you know, at the end of the day, like. I, I, I just I, I gotta get back on it you know I have it but I gotta get back on it but you know they're okay but at the same time I would love to play through some of these old Capcom IPs in new forms new formats Mega Man X9 Mega Man Legends Dino Crisis of all things Breath of Fire goodness because Breath of Fire 6 was a, a it was a letdown and I, I didn't get a chance to play it because it was like only in like Japan only or like Korea or something like that. I forget, but oh my God, I would love to see a legitimate Breath of Fire 6 with Ryu and Nina, the, the, the main staples of a Breath of Fire series. Okay. And let's not do the whole like Dragon Quest thing all over again. Let's go back to the basics. Okay. Just go back to the basics of these old games. Find out what made them work, what made them so popular, which, of course, in the case of Breath of Fire, you know, go back to the traditional JP, uh, JRPG uh, battle system and just uh, improve upon that. That's it. That's all you have to do. Figure out a way to do that or figure out a way to give it the Final Fantasy treatment and, like, you know, make it a little bit action RPG. With some dragon transformations, okay? Getting gracious and Breath of Fire. The the one thing that most people know about Dra Breath of Fire is that there's dragon transformations. That's the only way that works, people. Anywho, I'm just saying. It's it's a lot that you, you, you're you leaving off the table, and it's crazy to me. Okay? It's just so crazy to me. Oh. But you you don't want to do it. You you gotta put. We gotta start putting some more effort in this, people. Cause I mean, shoot, you are leaving things off the table that could actually make you a whole bunch of money by re-releasing them, by re 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 remastering some of them, re-releasing them, allowing for these uh for these uh ser uh not services. Um, but these, uh, game stores, well, you know, digital game stores like PSN and Xbox, uh, Game Pass and stream and, and Steam, I'm sorry, Steam, you're, you're leaving it off the table by now allowing people to play those. Like you could sell them for $10 and guess what? You might. People will eat the old school stuff up and it might give you that. It, it might hopefully entice you to make some of these games again. But you don't want to do it for some reason. It doesn't make any sense. And that can help you with building up money for new IPs. That people might actually be able to eat up because currently this whole triple A game thing is failing miserably. Uh, gaming like all your all these publishers and developers are having to you know cut the fat and excuse my words for people I didn't mean to make that a trigger warning but you know I'm just saying you're sitting here you know uh getting rid of a whole bunch of your team cuz you can't make a profit and the reason why you can't make a profit is because you're making these stupid decisions to do the whole live service model, which is stupid. 
it's not good it's only it, it it's a rarity when it actually works out for you come on people stop with the microtransactions because it's not good enough i mean i'm sorry but at the end of the day these microtransactions you're wanting people to spend extra money when back in the day back in the good days of gaming okay you know the early 90s the the 90s the early 2000s where you had to get your you have to get good in order to unlock all the characters of a game that you bought instead now oh yeah um just pay to unlock these new characters we're gonna do this whole season pass thing and it's just gonna be but you you can just give us money give us all this money and all this stuff and people are starting to get fed up with it you know this gamers are definitely getting fed up with it but back to the subject at hand Capcom baby baby honey like <laughs> people have spoken like come on like Mega Man X is like uh, uh, like bring back some Mega Man X bring back some Mega Man Mega Man X Mega Man and games like Metroid or like uh, are, are like the beginner speedrunner thing so there's still obviously a market for it I don't know like I'm just a, a, I just a, I'm just a consumer of games okay I'm a gamer at heart I've been a gamer since I was freaking two or three years old playing a freaking Atari and I in a what do you call that place you know babysitter uh in a daycare in a old daycare and all that stuff for the first time that's one of my first memories okay playing an Atari <laughs> and one of my first video games that I remember was a Mega Man 4 the first video game make uh, the first Nintendo game I owned okay was Mega Man 4 and I played through that game like it was like it was the best thing in the world when I was a little kid okay when I was six years old I believe six or seven years old and I remember playing through that game I remember it Okay, so much so that when I had the Mega Man Leg the Mega Man Legacy Collection, right? I played through it. And I remembered some of the things and I it felt so nostalgic, okay? Like I have the Mega Man Leg Legacy Collection. I have the Mega Man X Legacy Collection. I have the Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection. And I even have uh Mega Man Bat ne a Battle Network. Legacy collection on my Nintendo Switch, okay? Come on, Megan. Come on, Capcom. You you got this. I mean, we could bring back some Marvel vs. Capcom people. Goodness, good. Malcolm. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is probably the best of the the bunch, okay? Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was, you know, it was all right. But, you know, it's not, Mega Man, it's not Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Let's just be honest. But... Mm, Y'all, y'all did kind of mess up with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity. <sighs> it sucks. However, guess what? Because you failed with Infinity doesn't mean you need to drop the freaking IP. Go back, get that freaking, get that freaking rights from uh, M Disney Marvel all over again, and let's make some money. Make yourself some money, Disney. Give like let them let them use the Marvel brand again, and like team up together, and make bank. Y'all are dropping money for no reason whatsoever. <sighs> Anyways, that's all I have to say for this video. Um, also, by the way, like I said, I, I, I did run into some, you know, gaming fatigue, but I'm getting back. I'm, I'm coming back uh, with this, some streams. I'm working on trying to do the Mega Man X speed run soon. I'm going to go back to our Final Fantasy Rebirth streaming soon. Um, you know, just, you know, a little tired because I got work in DoorDash, and of course, and I... 
you know, got a little life to live, if you know what I mean. But, yeah. Uh, uh, and, oh, yeah, I'm going to Mama Car next month. Cause, you know, I live in Atlanta. A few friends want to hang out. A few friends that I have who I had. Some of them I have met in person. And some of them I haven't met in person. I can't wait to meet them in person. Are going to come down and all that stuff. So I'm definitely going to do that. And maybe I might actually film my, like, adventures in Momocon. But uh, let's just say I'm getting back into the groove of things. I, you know, I got this new you know, webcam, so everything should hopefully work soon, so, until next time, you guys, have a good day, have a good week, have a good month, and have a good year, it's 2024, people, and, uh, oh yeah, one more thing, fuck you, Dan Schneider, and fuck you, all you fuckheads, and Nickelodeon for making for making it so fucking what the fuck is wrong with people good lord